Um, so with that, to get started, so what is a systematic review? Um, and this is sort of a discipline agnostic kind of definition that we're focusing on here. So it gathers, assesses, synthesizes all available empirical research on a specific question using a comprehensive search method with an aim to minimize bias. Uh, and so we really want to highlight those two things, you know, comprehensive search method. That's what we're going to be talking about uh, a lot, both in any consultations that we have with you, as well as through this workshop series, is how to make it comprehensive. And then that aim, too, of minimizing bias. Um, and that's a huge part of systematic reviews. And as we'll talk about some other reviews as well, is minimizing that bias. And then we've got a few key characteristics of systematic reviews that we want to focus on. So clearly stated set of objects, objectives with a predefined eligibility criteria for studies. And this is one of those things that can vary a little bit based on your discipline. Um, there might be some different expectations on do you absolutely have to have all of your eligibility criteria determined in advance and registered in advance with a, proto with a protocol? Is there a little bit more flexibility on that? Um, and so we'll talk a little bit more about different guidelines and different expectations, but generally you'll want to have, you know, all of that sort of figured out in advance before you really start digging into um, screening any kind of literature. And also an explicit reproducible methodology. Um, and another key sort of point that I probably should have added to the slide too is transparency, right? We want to make that methodology as transparent as possible with systematic reviews. And so that's something that um, as we're talking through this, you'll, you'll hear a lot, both reproducibility and transparency when it comes to systematic reviews and conducting one. Um, and a third key characteristic, um, a systematic search, and that gets at that comprehensive piece, um, that attempts to identify all studies that would meet your eligibility criteria. Um, and I'm using the term eligibility criteria here. I'm trying to be more consistent about using that term. Uh, you may also be familiar with inclusion exclusion criteria. That's the same thing. And it's just a more concise way of saying that. So I'll be using eligibility criteria, um, but think inclusion exclusion criteria as you hear that. Um, and then another key um, aspect of systematic reviews that might be a little bit different based on your discipline is this critical appraisal of included studies. And we're going to talk about other reviews that may or may not include this critical appraisal, but generally with systematic reviews and in light of that sort of minimizing bias aspect of them, it really includes, you know, an emphasis on are these highly credible um, sources that we're using or what are their different methodologies, you know, that sort of critical aspect of can we trust this uh, article above this article and why and sort of looking into all of those. And then um, a systematic presentation and synthesis of the characteristics and finding of the included studies. And so that's a little bit of, you know, both the analysis piece, but also the reporting. So writing out your paper and synthesizing all of these things. Um, and so then sort of thinking through why, why would we want to conduct a systematic review? And many of you are probably familiar with this evidence pyramid or something like this. There's, there's a lot of different versions of this out there. And this is one that I use that's a little more focused on some of the you know, social sciences and specifically clinical, because you'll see that clinical guidelines up there. Um, but at the top of this pyramid is systematic reviews and meta-analyses. And so this is just talking about when we're talking about evidence-based practice and we want the highest quality of evidence, that's when we turn to the systematic review and meta-analysis methodology, um, because ideally this is taking everything else from the rest of this pyramid and synthesizing it into, into one place. And um, an illustration of this, I have um, my cat Freya here, who is uh, my lovely model for what it can feel like to wade into all of the literature, right, surrounding your topic. You know, how do you put all of these pieces together? How do you know which pieces are most credible? And so that's why we conduct systematic reviews, right? So it's to 
create that synthesis so that we're keeping you know, clinicians up to date is a huge part of it. We're identifying what gaps there are in the knowledge. Um, and then again, that appraisal piece, the quality of those studies conducted, and then mitigating bias, which was back in that, uh, um, in that definition that we saw 